G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel and as you can tell, I am back. After a 31 day trip through Dubai, Croatia and London, I am back in my native Perth and just in time for what is probably the most exciting time of the season. Now, it was a bold move to leave my AFL YouTube channel in the middle of the football season, but to be honest, you do just have to do Europe in the summer. There's no other way to do it. I did miss making videos. I did have every intention of going and making videos while I was away, but as soon as I landed and the beers started flowing, you can imagine I didn't even touch my camera once. With the finals coming up, though I do have big plans for this channel. I will be doing my best to pump out as much content between now and the grand final as possible. For starters, this weekend, Busher, Joycey and myself will probably be getting together to do the True Footy podcast once again. Make sure you keep an eye out for that. That should be up sometime early next week. Maybe it's just because the Eagles are once again up to their neck in it this year, but personally, I am absolutely pumped for the last month of the footy season. In this video, as you've probably guessed, I will be taking you through my tips for round 20. For something new though, at the end of each tipping video, I'm going to include what the ladder will look like if I get all my tips correct. So without further ado, let's get into round 20. On Friday night, we have North Melbourne versus Hawthorne at Marvel Stadium. Since Reece Shaw took over as North Melbourne caretaker, it's been no secret that North looked like a completely different team. It was announced today that Reece Shaw is now their permanent head coach, and I do have some views for that, but I'm going to save those for the podcast on the Big weekend. The Roos' biggest scalp in this time frame has definitely been Collingwood, and, and if, if it weren't for some close losses against Essendon, and the Lions, they'd probably be a final shot right now. Ben Cunnington in particular is enjoying a career best season and is probably one of the best pure inside mids in the comp and Robbie Tarrant is reaching similar heights in the back line. Such has been North's improvement recently that Brisbane Lions players apparently actually remarked that North is one of the hardest opponents they've had all year. I mean, Essendon did touch them up by about 10 goals in round three, but whatever. The Roos were picked apart a bit by West Coast last week, but to be fair, West Coast was in red hot form. On the other hand, the Hawks sit in 11th spot and are mathematically still a chance to play finals this year. Last week, they were dealt with fairly easily by the Lions down in Launceston, but before that, they had a bit of a purple patch winning three games in a row. Two of these wins were against Geelong and Collingwood, although neither of those sides are in red hot form at the moment. Personally, I've been really impressed with James Warple. He's a second year player and there's been absolutely no sign of second year blues with him. In fact, he's definitely gone to another level. For a second year player to be one of their most important midfield contributors, that is a big achievement. I'm going to tip a roughie in this game. I'm tipping North to end Hawthorne's slim finals hopes and get the job done by 17 points. Next up is Essendon versus Port Adelaide, again at Marvel Stadium. It does appear that Essendon might finally be starting to deliver on their promise. They've overcome a bad start to the season and it does appear they're an absolute monty to play finals now. They've won their last five in a row, although most of those games were against teams that were either badly out of form or down the bottom of the ladder. They have won their last five in a row, although the caveat to that is that they've been against teams that were either quite badly out of form or not going to play finals this year. Nonetheless, these are games Essendon probably would have dropped in previous years, so there definitely has been improvement. They come up against a power side that is absolutely gripping to their season for dear life. The power have won just two out of their last six, but frustratingly, those two wins were really impressive wins against Geelong and Adelaide. They're horribly out of form at the moment, and it's hard to see that improving this week. They've got some serious forward half issues. They're statistically the best inside 50 team all year and equally they're 17th in the comp for scores from inside 50s. They were a bit stiff to lose to the Giants last week, but unfortunately the reality is this game becomes do or die for them. The recent form against the Dons isn't great. They've lost their last three against them. To be honest, this game for me is an easy tip. I'm going to have to tip Essendon by 29 points. Next up, we have GWS versus Sydney at Giants Stadium. Typically, the Battle of the Bridges or the Sydney Derby has been a battle between two strong sides, but this year is the first year the Giants have definitely been far superior. They've won the last two clashes between these sides, and to be honest, it's hard to see that changing this time. After a three-game mid-year slump, the Giants have hit back with big wins over Collingwood and Port Adelaide away. As it stands, they currently sit in fifth spot with very little margin for error in the final month if they want a top four spot. Cornelio's unfortunately out for six weeks, but on the plus side, Lockie Whitfield's return has been significant and Toby Green has really stood up. The Swans, on the other hand, continue a disappointing transitional year for the club. They put up a decent fight against Geelong last week, but prior to that, lost to a fifeless Fremantle and lost to the Blues in Sydney. Nonetheless, you can't help but feel the pressure is right off Sydney this year. They're definitely 
focusing on getting games into that younger generation. And of the bottom few sides, they're probably one of the most dangerous when they're actually on form. Having said that, with finals on the horizon for GWS, I can't see Sydney giving them too much trouble this week. I'm gonna tip the Giants to win this by 27 points. Next up, we have Fremantle hosting the Geelong Cats in Perth. Now, Fremantle are probably enduring one of their worst form slumps in recent years. Since their win over the power, they dropped six of their last seven and had some bad losses in that time. They were probably still in with a slight final shot going into last week, but a massive loss to the Dogs in Melbourne probably ended that dream. It also doesn't help that this is their first game against Geelong since their infamous game last year in Cardinia where they conceded 23 goals in a row. There is no doubt that Fremantle have copped it bad from the injury stick this year, and it doesn't help that Luke Ryan is now ruled out for three weeks with another injury. On the plus side for Fremantle, they obviously want to develop some kids throughout this difficult time for the club, but Andy Brayshaw stood up massively last week, had three goals and 26 possessions, undoubtedly his best game at AFL level. Now for Geelong, the situation is that every game matters. Obviously every game matters, but with four games to go until finals, Geelong really want to shore up top spot. They are entrenched in first place by a game and healthy percentage, but obviously if they lose one game, then they could be brought right back to the pack. With Richmond and West Coast in ominous form and the Cats having to travel to Brisbane in a couple of weeks to play the Lions, I can't see them letting this opportunity slip. Geelong have lost two of their last five, but for mine, I think they've had their form slump and I think this week they're gonna kick back into gear. They just have too much star talent in their side and even someone like Mitch Duncan is enjoying a career best season. He's really bobbing up as that Lockie Whitfield type forward. I'm gonna say the Dockers put up a bit of a fight in this game, but Geelong's gonna be too strong. They're gonna win by 33 points. Next up, we have Melbourne versus Richmond at the MCG. Now, with the form that Carlton are in under David Teague, it does appear Melbourne are absolutely destined to finish bottom two now. Their whole month while I was away didn't really get much better for them. Their only highlight in that time was a five point win over Carlton. Last week was a big opportunity for them to sort of regain a bit of standing in the AFL community and they couldn't get the job done against St Kilda. They led for most of the game, but were overrun in a fashion that is pretty consistent with the narrative of their season. To demonstrate the fall that Melbourne have suffered this year, this is the third worst percentage drop in a single season by a club since 2000. And one of those teams was Carlton after they got busted for salary cap issues. This week is going to be a very tough ask for them against Red Hot Richmond. I'm liking the term Red Hot at the moment. I'm just going to go with it. It does appear the Tigers have overtaken Geelong as the raging premiership favourite on the back of their big win over Collingwood. Whether that tag is justified does remain to be seen. While the Tigers have definitely looked really dangerous lately, it does have to be considered that some of those teams they've played were either horribly out of form or not very high on the ladder. That being said, you can only beat who you play and I think Richmond definitely are in the top three contenders this year. With a top two finish still achievable for Richmond, I can't see them letting this opportunity against Melbourne slip. Cochin might be up for them, but with Dusty in the form he's in and the fact that Richmond's midfield just beat up on Collingwood, I think they're going to be okay this week. I'm tipping the Tigers to win easily by 45 points. Next up, we have Adelaide hosting St Kilda down at Adelaide Oval. Now, each and every week there is a team in the AFL media's crosshairs and this week it happens to be Adelaide. Probably justifiably so as they just got dumped by Carlton at the MCG. This week they've been under the microscope scope and the narrative has been they've got the second oldest list in the comp and the second healthiest this year. Therefore, is languishing in eighth spot really good enough? They dropped four of their last five and the pressure is well and truly mounting on Don Pike. Nonetheless, I think every team is entitled to a form slump each and every year and this just happens to be theirs and to be honest, they do sit in eighth spot still. Now with the battle for eighth spot really tightening up, this really isn't a game Adelaide can afford to lose. To contrast Adelaide's fortunes, St Kilda have been by far the most injury struck club this year. They performed accordingly and even sacked their coach on the back of all the built up pressure. Since then, they're 2-0 under Brett Ratton and even had a good win over the Doggies who were still in finals contention. One player I've definitely noticed is Hunter Clark. He's kind of bobbed up in recent weeks and is playing an important role for just a second year player. And he's a guy that I really liked pre-draft as well. Now the Saints aren't quite in finals contention, but they may be motivated by the fact they've got a new coach and some players probably don't know where they sit and where they're gonna get a contract next year. Nonetheless, I think this is the game Adelaide gets a bit of pressure off their backs. They're going to win this game by 15 points. Next up, Collingwood versus Gold Coast at the MCG. As we've all heard, Collingwood are going into this game with a mere 27 fit players on their list, which is insane. There's no doubt that's hurting them, but you could make the argument their issues lie a little bit deeper than that. On paper, a midfield of Pendlebury, Trelaw, Phillips and Sidebottom backed up with Dugowie, Crisp and Main running through is fairly strong. You could argue it shades Richmond's on paper, yet Richmond towed them up in the middle last week. They've won one in five of the Pies, but to be fair, the one they did win was a monumental effort against the Eagles in Perth in what was probably the game of the season. Now, some are suggesting that Gold Coast are a decent chance to win this week on the back of the Pies injuries, but I'm not sure I'd go that far. They put up a good effort last week against the Dons, but I think they're just a little bit cooked this year, the Gold Coast. They play 
a high intensity physical and defensive game style that really isn't sustainable over the course of a season for such a young team. For me, there's nothing rotten with the Suns as far as their coach goes and I think he's the right man for the job, but they've probably just cooked it a little bit this year. Also, the G is a very tough ask for any traveling young interstate side. So I'm going to go ahead and tip Collingwood to win by 10 goals. Next up, we have Carlton and West Coast at Marvel Stadium. Now, this game has become an unlikely prospect for match of the round. Nonetheless, the form turnaround under David Teague at Carlton has made them probably one of the most watchable sides in the comp right now. Last week, the Blues outworked and outclassed Adelaide all day, and they're playing with a confidence we haven't seen from them in years. We saw Pat Cripps put in a game for the ages, although that really isn't anything new from the young champ. He was strongly supported by other experienced players, Cade Simpson, Ed Kerno, Mark Murphy, even Levi Casbold had a day out. Then you have young gun Sam Walsh who was having an insane first year. I'm going to talk about that a little bit more on the podcast but uh, you also got Will Satterfield bobbing up and starting to show the immense promise that he has. On the other hand the Eagles were quietly clinical last week against North Melbourne getting the job done. Such was their dominance and their precision of ball movement that Josh Kennedy who's horribly out of form bagged seven goals on Robbie Tarrant who's one of the best key defenders in the competition. Like Richmond West Coast are another side that's hitting their straps right at the latter time of the season. Now whether this is the right time to peak I I'm actually not 100% sure, especially with the pre-finals buy coming up. But importantly for the Eagles, they do have a healthy squad at the right time of the year, that's for sure. With the top two battles so tight, like a few other clubs, the Eagles have no margin for error and they cannot let it slip this week. I predict the Eagles will bring their A game, but the Blues will put up a good fight. I'm going to tip the Eagles to win here by 13 points. The final game of the round is Brisbane Lions versus the Bulldogs, and this is another match of the week contender. Now, in the last few weeks since I've been away, the Lions have absolutely emerged as a genuine premiership threat. They've won their last four games away from home, which is generally a hallmark of a very good team. In particular, their win over the Giants in Sydney was an ominous sign for the rest of the competition. Now, if you ask me, there's no doubt they've benefited from an easy draw, and I believe they've lost the least amount of games to injury this year. Having said that, though, if they do enough to secure a top two position, they're going to put themselves in a very good chance to play two home finals and then make the grand final. Like I just said about West Coast, there is no margin for error when you're going for top two now, so they really need to get it right this week. Now, aside from Port Adelaide, I would say the Bulldogs are the team that probably makes their supporters tear their hair out the most. They've passed some really big tests this year and with recent wins over Geelong and Port Adelaide in Adelaide, they've brought themselves into finals calculations. On the other hand, they did just lose to the Saints, which could prove a very costly loss come the end of the season. I've been talking the Bulldogs up as a sleeping giant for some time. I thought their midfield stacks up very well against some of the better sides in the competition and that was before Josh Dunkley became really good. I'm going to tip a roughie here, guys. I'm going to tip the Dogs to get the job done at the gap up by 13 points. Is that partly motivated by the fact my tipping has gone to shit while I was away and I need to tip a roughie to get back into it? Yes. Am I also kind of biased because I need the doggies to beat Brisbane so West Coast stay in second? Maybe. That being said, I do think there is a serious chance the doggies are going to get up. I do rate them. Been saying it all year. So. so that is the end of round 20. As I promised, here is a look at the projected ladder at what it would look like if I get all my tips correct. As you can see, the Lions losing to the dogs helps the Eagles consolidate second spot. Adelaide also consolidate eighth spot with a win over St. Kilda. Now, next week, I will include the bottom 10 in this graphic as well, but because I'm running so short on time and I just landed, I didn't bother with the second half of the ladder. Sorry, guys. But anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys guys, it's good to be back. As I always say, if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit subscribe. The content will be much more regular from now on. Also, like I said before, don't forget to tune in for the True Footy Podcast. Should be up early next week. Thanks, guys. I'll see you all very soon.